it says that then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah. So 26, God is talking to his prophet Jeremiah. And 27, Jeremiah lets us know of the word that he received from the Lord. The word of the Lord came unto me. And this is what God said. Look. Or behold. I am the Lord. The God. Of all flesh. And can there be anything that is. Too hard for me. And I want you to take note. This is a question. God is asking Jeremiah the prophet a question. If there is anything that you know to be too hard for the Lord God of all flesh, let me know. Is there anything that is hard for God? The God of all flesh. Now God calls himself the God of, and not just the God of all the spirits. He is the God of all flesh. And I want to prove something to you now today, which is very important. Have you realized that we have had teachings and uh, statements that seek to suppress the flesh and undermine the flesh? There's been a lot of messages from the pulpit. That wants you to overlook and to ignore your flesh. As if God doesn't have anything to do with your flesh. And yet when people get sick in their flesh, they still come to God. Which is proof that they are very much aware that He is the God of all flesh God loves you and when God loves you he loves your spirit he loves your soul and he loves your flesh your flesh is very important now if you want your love life to improve improve the way you love yourself. You are the first person who should experience your own love. Be the first person. That's why God said, love your neighbor as you love your. Which means if you can love yourself, you can love your neighbor. So the problem now is people don't understand how to appreciate themselves and to love themselves and to cherish themselves and that is the reason why it is difficult for you to even love your wife even love your husband even love your neighbor because your flesh hasn't yet experienced even the love that you have you don't know how to love yourself you are very important in the eyes of god and god loves your spirit he loves your soul and, and he loves your flesh and i can give you the first proof that god loves your flesh he's the one who created it
You see, the flesh, God had your spirit already. God had your spirit. Before he created your flesh, he had your spirit in heaven. And your spirit was already with God. Your spirit was already in existence, created by God as a spirit, and you were in heaven. And it was your spirit that was given the likeness of God, which means acting like God, thinking like God, and behaving like God. That grace was given to your spirit. And you were created as a spirit by God and you were in heaven before you were formed in the flesh. So you are in heaven as a spirit, but God wants you to visit earth. He wants you to represent him here on earth. And that's his mission. He wants you down here to represent the kingdom that is invisible. And he said, I want you to go down, but for you to be there, you need flesh. And God said, let me form men. Let us create men in our own image. And God then created your flesh. And I believe it took God time to create your flesh. Because there is a scripture that supports that, that says, for you were wonderfully and fearfully made. Which means God really took his time to create your flesh. And God cannot spend time working on something that is useless. No. Wonderfully, which means you are wonderful, and fearfully. The way that God designed you, there is no car that comes close to you. There is no technology that, that comes close to the way that God designed you. Which means God is a master in complicated and sophisticated things. And he created you so that when he looks at you, he enjoys looking at you flesh he is the god of the flesh so sometimes if you desire to have something that is material something that is physical something that is flesh it is not a sign that you've missed uh, the presence of god no it's proof that you're like god God, being a spirit, created all flesh. He owns not just cars, he owns all flesh. Yet he is a spirit. He wants to have flesh as his own possessions. He is a material God. He is a physical God. He likes having material things. You, yourself sitting here, you are like his vehicle that is parked because he stays in you so look at god who doesn't like nice cars even god even god now he cannot come down to earth and move around on earth no he has to get into you you are now the temple of the holy spirit he gets into you and you drive him around you become the vehicle that carries god everywhere he goes he likes vehicles and look at how he designed you so you accommodate god you carry god you have god in your flesh like right now you have god in your flesh this is the confidence that the devil doesn't want you to have but you have god now in your flesh the devil wants you to think that God is still in heaven. God is in you right now. He's in your flesh and he enjoys dwelling in your flesh. I and my father will come and abide in you.
who will come in. When Jesus says, I behold, I stand at the door knocking. He is knocking the door of your flesh. So that you can open the door for him and then he enters. And then he reigns from your flesh. And he exercises his dominion on earth through your flesh. Dominion over principalities and powers and demons and diseases from your flesh. So, so now I want you to see something here. God, when he says, don't do something. All of the commandments that God gave to us. God was not worried really about us losing him. When you sin, you commit sin before God. After God has already told you not to sin. It is not only the presence of God that you lose. You lose your own presence on earth. You become irrelevant. When you walk into an environment instead of the power of God to be exercised in that environment, you lose that part. That's why each time you commit sin, you lose confidence even to stand before God. Am I, am I talking to somebody? Even for you to enter into a secret place and make demands, you can't do that. You are always begging God for something and confessing your sins every day. Because you now feel unworthy to make claims from the scriptures. You can't then place a demand and say, God, may you please do this for me i would want to see this thing happening tomorrow because sin has taken away your confidence in the presence of god so when you sin you lose not just the presence of god but you also lose your presence on earth you become irrelevant what you say ceases to matter anymore you can't act like god now you can't execute the likeness of god us any situation so now look at this now look at this and when god says don't sin he he he, he doesn't want to really benefit from that he wants you to benefit if god says don't worry worry not worry not the worry that you worry with will never disturb God. God never at any point did he visit a doctor to get his blood pressure checked because of our worries down here. Hello? Hello? So if he tells you not to to worry he knows what happens to your flesh not your spirit your flesh not your spirit your flesh what become of your flesh he knows that the more you worry the fewer years that you live on earth the sooner you die and he doesn't want you to die Look at what he said. He told Israel. He said, when you enter the promised land and you keep my commandments, you shall dwell in the land that I have given you to possess for a very long time. God wants you down here for a very long time. So if God is missing us now in heaven, and he wants us home he should have killed us the day that we received jesus because we were already ready for heaven by then we were ready for heaven why is he still keeping us down here he wants us to demonstrate his kingdom on earth on earth on earth you see we are waiting now for god to take us to heaven and he is expecting us to pray his kingdom down 
your will be done on earth as it is in heaven what he wants us to do is never to escape earth he wants us to colonize earth and bring down his will on earth as it is in let's convert earth into heaven that is our mission on earth when somebody talks to you let him leave you saying i've heard the voice of god i've seen somebody who represents god on earth that is our mission that is our mission that is our mission be seated please i wanted to see something here very important god wants you to be happy god wants your flesh to flourish flesh 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 say flesh flesh god you see john says he puts it this way oh i pray how i wish that you may prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers as you prosper in your soul prosper also in your health prosperity of your health all the clinics that you see the clinics the hospitals they are built to support fleshly prosperity if you don't believe in my message you have to close all of these hospitals convert all the ambulances into combis and so on in texas the reason why people get treated is because the flesh is very important it's very important to a point where even jesus himself doesn't want to get into you if you don't have the flesh jesus jesus imagine and some of you think i am down i am not really confident can god really love me the way i am you see your flesh qualifies you for jesus your flesh can i prove this to you a reminder that's why if you die and you are buried you can't receive jesus after that why and yet you still have your spirit why you now being a spirit alone without flesh you can't receive jesus he doesn't want to come so what qualifies you for jesus is the flesh take care of your flesh it's very important am i, am I talking to somebody here so most of you you think jesus is coming to you and dining with you and spending hours with you simply because of your spirit no 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 okay even your spirit came down here because it saw flesh you were in heaven right and when god formed your flesh your spirit was attracted to fleshly things your spirit was attracted to fleshly things and then you got trapped in that physical body And if your flesh doesn't prosper, your spirit will depart. Your flesh. Now, I want to tell you something very, very powerful here that will keep you for the rest of your life. Look at this. The devil right now, he knows one thing. He can't do anything to reverse your salvation. Okay? Now, even if the devil makes you to sin, he, he hasn't won the battle even if he causes you to commit sin he knows that it's not really a big deal because two minutes later you can still confess and you can get washed by the blood of jesus and then we are back to square one again so his greatest desire is not really for you to sin he wants your spirit out of that flesh because he knows that your spirit outside of the flesh is no longer a threat to him but having your spirit in your flesh and you are on earth you can cause havoc in his kingdom confusion in his kingdom because your flesh is your license right now you are authorized to represent god on earth 
and this flesh is your passport. So when the devil looks at a child of God, his greatest wish is for you to die physically. And after you are dead physically, that's the end of you. You stop functioning as a child of God. Be seated. Why should you die and experience God after your death? No. We experience God now. Today. He came that we might have life and that we might have it in abundance. Abundance means overflowing. Which means now and into eternity. Hmm? He came that we might have. So Christians now, they say, no, he's not talking about the life now. You know, he's not talking about now. He's talking about when you're dead and then you're raised and, and so on. Who is not going to have life after death? Even sinners are going to be raised from the dead. Sinners shall be raised from the dead. So what's so special about your resurrection if sinners are also going to be raised? Eternal life starts now. <laughs> Flesh is very important. Why do people celebrate the resurrection of Jesus? Not because he was raised spiritually. No. They celebrate the resurrection of his body. And they say, if, they say if the flesh is wicked. Everywhere you go, people are saying, the flesh is wicked. The flesh is wicked. And when Jesus' flesh was raised from the dead, people celebrate that. It was his flesh that was raised. So the miracle is never in your spirit being raised. It is in your flesh being raised flesh he is the god of all flesh god wants you to eat right he wants you to sleep well hello when the sabbath day was instituted by god and he said the rest he wasn't speaking to your spirit he wanted your flesh to have rest flesh to have rest God doesn't want you to have a disease in your body <laughs> you see one thing about our spirits is very sad our spirits don't want to stay in our flesh if our flesh is not in good condition even our spirits don't enjoy staying in us. If things are not okay, if the flesh is worried, if your pocket is worried, if your children are worried, that affects your spirit. That's why when a human flesh is disturbed, a human flesh is disturbed. When the human flesh is disturbed, when you are shaken like that, immediately your spirit departs that's what happens when an accident takes place car accident when it takes place your body gets disturbed not your spirit your body is disturbed and once your flesh is marred your spirit escapes because it doesn't want to stay in anything that is disorganized your spirit wants you your own not just god your own spirits want you it wants you to be in perfect and in sound condition your spirit your spirit what causes a man to die eventually when a man is sick for two months three months and you are sick you are sick you are sick you are sick you are in pain what causes then a man to die 
it is never the disease that kills a man but when the spirit inside of that man finally gives up and stops experiencing joy from the flesh and sees that this flesh is never going to recover the spirit then says how how can i continue dwelling in a place which is this and prosperous as this one there is no prosperity in this flesh let me depart because from the flesh that is afflicted i cannot function well as a spirit the word of the lord is coming to jeremiah this was during the time of zedekiah the king of judah during his 10th year and nebuchadnezzar was the king of babylon for about 18 years now at this moment and Jeremiah, when, when, when Nebuchadnezzar came and besieged Jerusalem, Jeremiah was left because he was in prison. Imprisoned by Zedekiah because of his prophecies. So when, when Jerusalem was captured by Nebuchadnezzar, Jeremiah the prophet was left in Jerusalem because he was in, in a prison. And he's in a prison because he gave a prophecy that wasn't interesting to Zedekiah. And what was the prophecy? He told the king that Nebuchadnezzar is coming and he's going to overthrow you. He's going to conquer you. He's going to take everything that you have. And God is going to hand you over into his hands. And this was Jeremiah the prophet. This was his prophecy. And he said, my point of, my advice to you is, when you see him coming, remember my prophecy, that God has already handed you over to him. So the simplest thing that you can do is to surrender. Don't fight him, don't resist him, because you'll get more people killed for no reason. Because eventually, he is going to overthrow you. That was the prophecy. And because the king didn't like his way of prophesying he said i will arrest you and his flesh was arrested not this not the prophet the flesh of the prophet was arrested and jeremiah now eventually the prophet because the spirit inside of him that prophesied ended up in prison because that's where the flesh of the prophet was now jeremiah is in prison so when the devil really wants to torture you because your activities in the spirit he tortures your flesh he puts your flesh into a prison he can't touch your spirit the devil he cannot touch ask job ask job he cannot touch your spirit but he comes after your flesh that's why you have so many things that are bothering you now. They've got nothing to do with your spirit, but everything to do with your flesh. The devil wants to torture your flesh. Your flesh. Your flesh. He's worried about your flesh. So he wants to disturb you so that your spirit can depart. And once your spirit has departed, your spirit cannot work against him anymore. So Jeremiah is in prison. He has told the king, this is what is going to happen. And while it is there, exactly as he said it, it happened. The enemy came. And gave, God gave that enemy victory over Israel. And then while it's Jeremiah was there, God then told him another different message. He said, now that they are gone, this is what I've told you. But they will come back again, my people. I'll deliver them. And look at this land now. It's barren. There is nothing happening. But my people shall come back again. And God says, And houses and fields shall be owned again in this land of Zimbabwe. That's what he told you. 
understand. And Jeremiah didn't understand that. And God said to him, remember the message that I gave to you some time back. And God said to him, I want you to be the first one to go out of there and buy a property. Because when the rest of the people come back, you will not have a place. My prophet, go buy your own house. And God is telling Jeremiah not to read, just pray for the sick. No, he's not saying go and raise the dead. He's saying go and buy a property. Because the God is the God of all flesh. He wants your flesh that accommodates your spirit to be accommodating someone. Go and buy a house. God is advising a prophet to go and buy a house. So don't get worried when I buy my own house. I've been advised by God to buy my own house. Because he is the God of all flesh. He is the God of all flesh. He said, go and buy your house because houses shall be owned again in this land. In this land. <laughs> Be seated. Be seated. Be seated. Who doesn't like a house? If you don't like a house, it's not a sign that you're spiritual because your spirit is in your flesh now because it likes houses. It simply shows that you are not really normal when you don't like a house. Get some prayers as soon as possible. God is in you because he likes being in a house. Solomon built a house for the Lord and God was happy with him. Thank you for building me a house. But there shall come a time when I will not dwell in structures built by men. But I will stay in my own structures that I have built. People that I have designed. And I will make them my own accommodation. So, houses shall be owned again. Look at how many people that have lost their properties in our country here. Hmm? Most of the houses now are owned by the banks. Which means it is as good as you are no longer in Zimbabwe. You have been taken into captivity. And God gave a prophetic word that was going to bring change to the economy. And he said, my people will come back again. But before they do that, you, my servant, having a spirit that communicates with me, I like your spirit. And I would want you to be the first one before the rest of the people can come back they have to find you already prospering think about that think about that i can give you another example look at this i was speaking to another man of god and he told me something and when I heard what he said I said to him this is God talking to you and he said how can this be God I thought it was just my own idea I said no you don't have an idea like that this is God talking to you and he said to me so men of God talk to me about this how do I really know whether this is God talking to me or maybe it's just my mind. I said, why are you still afraid of your own mind? You now have the mind of Christ. 
There is no more difference between the voice of God and your mind. And I asked him a question. I said, why is it that when the devil comes after you, he comes to you through your mind? If he wants you to commit suicide, he gets into your mind. If he wants you to kill somebody, he gets into your mind. Why is it that the devil, when he comes to you, he targets your mind? Because he knows that's exactly what God targets when he comes to you. Amen. He targets your mind. So don't be afraid of your mind. Is this me? Is this God? Is this me? You and God, you see, you now have his mind. God thinks from your mind. Because the devil, if the devil is using your mind to do everything that you are doing now, why shouldn't God use your mind as well? It's God talking to you now. So there are things that you look at and you admire and you want to have them and you think it's you. It's not really you. It's God desiring those things in you. It's God in you. God in you. God in you. God in you. When God created everything, He looked at it and He said, This is good. He said, This is good. This is good. So He enjoys looking and beholding good. So when that same God gets inside of you and you look at beautiful houses you also have to say the same statements this is good this is good it's not a sign that you agreed no it's a sign that you see like god and you appreciate goodness good this is 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 good anything that makes you well in the flesh go for it Go for it. Go for it. I was teaching at Pastor's Church in Bridge, and I was talking to some business people. And I was, I was trying to help them to understand their importance. First and foremost, their own importance. If you don't understand your own importance, because remember God said you shall always have the poor in your land so make sure that your hands are stretched towards the poor every time so you are very very important when God when it comes to God blessing the poor you become God's instrument to bring joy to the poor and when you give anything whether it's money whether it's help whether it's a job to the poor you are making the poor happy which means money makes the poor excited even the poor people that get excited when they get money that's why god is saying you have money also give it to the poor so that they can also be happy not to, for them to enter heaven he's not saying give them jesus he's saying give them what you have give them money give money to the poor so they can also be happy which means God himself knows that if you give money to the poor, they get excited. He wants their flesh to be excited. He wants their flesh to be excited. He's not just saying pray for them. He's saying give them money. Give them money. Because money makes everyone happy. Right now, you're worried in your house every day. Men of God, we are fighting it every day. There's no peace in our house. No, it's not peace. That is not there. It's money. It's money. It's money. In the absence of money, you fight over little, 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 little things. Little things. Little things. Little things. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god you see when god gives you anything that's why he's giving us life in abundance because life which is not in abundance it causes us to fight again 
It's like cars that are not in abundance. One car can cause you to fight as a couple. Because he drops you there, this alone, and he says, once you are done, let me know, and then I'll come and pick you up. <laughs> and five hours later, the guy is nowhere to be found. And you are busy calling him, not because you love him. You love what he is driving. You are calling him because of the car. Who doesn't like prosperity? Hey, darling, where are you? Where are you? No. Say, where is it? The car. And then when the car finally comes, you are no longer talking. So, you yourself now as the husband instead of now appreciating the style you no longer see that because you were preparing yourself for the defense and then all the way no one sees what you have done on your head why because it's a cow of course but not in abundance Anything that is little can cause problems. You should have a lot. How can I, I, I'm, a, I'm surprised sometimes how a prophet can even come to you and say, There is a witch that uh, came to your house and uh, took your pants and you lost your pen and you can even remember so my question is how many of these little things do you have no no there's something something is wrong somewhere ah you 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 ask your maids in fact it's it's that's that's our background that's where we are coming from we are coming from a background where we used to name even gods God wants you to prosper in your flesh. Yes, sometimes I wonder, you see, you go to the village, you see a grown-up boy who wakes up early in the morning. It doesn't matter it's Christmas time. He goes into the forest. And he sits there watching them. These two beasts. A child can spend his entire life in the forest 
Because these two creatures have to feed while he is watching. Poverty is never a good thing. A child. Mana we munu kwete mwana we muka mwana we munu diano no garam sang muka yuko na kufura muka yuko na kufura and you don't see something wrong with that poverty is a disease which kills your flesh. And your spirit doesn't like that. Your spirit doesn't like that. Your spirit doesn't like that. Be seated. I want to close now. I want to close. I want to close. Ah. Ah. So he's telling Jeremiah that people are going to come back. They will own properties in this same country. But before they come back, you will be the first one to buy your own. And it is a good thing. It's a good thing. It's a good thing to have your own place. On earth, it's a good thing. Flesh. When God delivered Israel out of Egypt, He didn't deliver their spirits. He delivered their flesh out of bondage. God loves your flesh. When you see Jesus coming to earth and healing the sick, it's proof that He wants you to prosper in your health. It's proof. each other good night it has to be a good night and for the night to be good the bed has to be good for the night to be good the last food you ate was supposed to be good am I talking to somebody Prosperity is God's vision for you. He wants you to prosper in everything that you do because He Himself is a prosperous God. He prospers in everything He does. He prospers. He prospers. And imagine if you are created by a prosperous God and He gives you the same image and the same likeness that He has. You also have to prosper like your father. Is that not scriptural? Yes. But if you are not prospering now and you are feeling mad about it, it's proof that you are a normal human being. Don't be comfortable. Keep on fighting until you reach your prosperity level and when your flesh is now happy and excited then your spirit also begins to function somebody said to me the bible says don't love the world and everything that is in the world and i said where did you get your wife <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> you had thousands of angels surrounding you. But you went and you married the woman because what you saw was flesh. God wants you to have fleshly things. This message, I will never stop it. Because it's from God. <laughs> I have proof that God wants you to own fleshly things. Hmm? A man who tells you it's wrong to have anything material, tell him to get out of his body. Because your flesh is material. If you stay in your flesh and you feel comfortable, why not go ahead and stay in a good house? Because we have already started it. You have shown interest that you want to be in flesh. God wants you to prosper. He's the God of all flesh. And he says, is there anything too hard for me? That was the question. You see, people are enslaved right now. They are in Egypt. But bringing them back, do you think that's something that is too hard for me, God? To bring them back and to make them repossess their lost properties? Do you think that's something that is difficult for me to do? No. The flesh is very important. To a point where John even says, if a person does not confess that Jesus came in the flesh, he is an antichrist. That's how John puts it. Which means preachers should always preach about the fleshly side of Jesus. If you always call him spiritual, you are an antichrist. That's what he's saying. You have to confess that he came in the flesh. That makes the flesh very important. The flesh is very important. The flesh is very important. The flesh is very important. That's why you mustn't keep any disease in your flesh. It's not right. Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? Pastor, look at your beautiful wife here, what she is carrying. Mm -hmm. is, the, is it anything uh, spiritual? <laughs> eh? You are multiplying in the flesh. Hey, why do you need another child when you have God like that? Eh, you want to, he's one of the most spiritual people that we have, but he, you see, we have to multiply in the flesh. <laughs> and if anything goes wrong in that stomach she goes to God and asks for help God help me and God intervenes and helps and yet this thing is material why are we doing this on earth why did God say multiply why did he say multiply he gave us a job. He gave us an assignment to multiply fleshly things, material things, properties, houses. Multiply. Have your business in every city. Multiply. If you start one company, one company pregnant, let it produce another company. Ah. Ha. Ha. So flesh must multiply. That's why God gave seed to your flesh. So that your flesh can multiply itself. God wants plenty of you. Hello? God wants to see a lot of you. Be seated. I'm closing. Flesh. Flesh is very important. Flesh is very important. If flesh is not important, why do you cry when your husband who is flesh divorces you? Why do you cry? <laughs> why? 
this is flesh why do you cry if you get to about 50 years no marriage we see you crying throughout the sermon what you don't have is not really god you have god but there is a flesh that you are looking for and not having somebody in your life makes you cry yeah? because you are designed by god to gather flesh around you your flesh needs another flesh take away everything from me but don't take away this nice piece of a girl sitting there Nombo, nombo nani jimbo wasia? Aiwa, kwat 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 kwat. Why? Why 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 why? She's so important to a point where even before I had this ministry, she was already around. I went for her before I started ministry. Yeah? And why do I like flesh so much? Hey, you think your prophet is just spiritual. I'm not just spiritual. <laughs> I'm physical. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how God designed me. It doesn't matter I'm reading my Bible. When she passes there, not properly dressed, I close my Bible. I will close it. Because he is the God of all flesh. He wants you to enjoy physically. Don't let the devil stop you from enjoying life. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Tell your neighbor, God loves your flesh. Be seated. And your glory we see.